that's the bare minimum you need to take off. But I'm going to take off a little bit more because you can see I could do with losing some weight. More chins than the Chinese phone book. doing that hand planing is to plane a face on it that makes that board stable enough to go through the thicknesser. Don't worry about it not being all flat because you just turn it over once you've got a completely flat face and run it through and finish the board off. It's that simple really and you're left with two parallel faces. You still have two other faces to sort out and you need one face square to get to go forward. Use your body weight, not your arms. fun you can have with your clothes on. You'll probably find when you're playing in the edge that the angle will be towards your body. And that's only ever so slight, so it's not great, not a big de deal to fix that. I mean, just slightly angle the plane. If I was going to join two boards together here, I'd put them both in the vise at the same time, and it wouldn't matter what angle I'm putting on those two boards at the same time, because when you fold them back together again, it'll be a seamless joint. Now, if I could give you one tip, it's how you hold your leading hand. I'm going to call it, because I don't know whether you're left or right-handed. To my super fans, Justin Walsh, Peter Davidoff, Mark Dana, Jimmy Frick, and Derek Hansen. Thank you. You see how my fingers are underneath that plane that's trying to keep it at a right angle and that thumb is not on the tote. And now to get those two edges parallel, just run it through a table saw. And then just remove the table saw blade marks. I'll use a smoother for that, which is number four. And then chop roughly to length. If you're going to glue a panel up, I would just chop roughly to length. Now there you go, that's a nice prep board. Now did any of that look difficult? Because it's really not, and it's not time consuming. Oh, and here's a little sheet from Veritas, just in case you cannot get square edges. Try that. I find the most important part about hand tool work is muscle memory, and having that little stabilizer on there, that'll um, help build muscle memory, and then you won't need it. Which brings me to my point of this film. That aged old question, should I buy a planer or a thicknesser first? AKA jointer. Most people will say to you buy a thicknesser, which makes sense because it is possible to get two parallel faces on a board. But people will tell you to use, make a sled to get two faces parallel on a board. And I don't think that's a very good idea. It's only a good idea if it's for short length boards. Um, if you're going to be making a dining table that's say 2.2 meters long, that sled you need is, needs to be two and a half meters long. So your the space you need to be able to plane that board is five meters. Now let's say it's, the boards are 300 mil wide, 40 mil thick, 2.2 meters long. That's quite a weight in itself. Now you need to add to that a sled. A sled needs to be quite stout and rigid, and it definitely needs to be flat because that's what you're referencing referencing off. That board needs to be locked off to that sled. It needs to be shimmed to that sled. And when you put the board in here and put it out the other side and carry it around, you mustn't knock it because you'll knock it out of its plane, which will change your face. So some people will say, well, use a piece of 18 mil MDF. That's not going to be rigid enough to support the wood you're trying to thickness. You might think, glue two pieces of 18 mil MDF together 
and that'd be rigid enough. It's still not rigid enough. Trust me, I've tried it. I have been through all this, believe me, because I started off with this. This is my old thicknesser. My brother now has. And I did the whole sled routine. And it's a raw pain in the ass. Like these bloody cars that keep driving past when I'm trying to shoot sound. Um, work in the middle of nowhere. It's always quiet. But you come just to the workshop to shoot sound. And every man and his dog's driving along the road. The Harley Davidson come along in a minute. Anyway, yeah, so you could try making a honeycomb type sled that's really rigid. But that's adding to the weight of that board you're trying to play in as well so that it gets mighty heavy now if you've got four or five of those boards to do it's going to be very taxing on you um, and it's going to take it forever now what i've just showed you it's the quickest way of doing it i mean you just need to skim off a nice face enough of that board to have enough to reference off of through this through the thickness of once that outside face is nice and um, dressed, you flip that over and finish off what you're doing with the hand plane. It's quick um, and it's a nice little workout as well. Who doesn't like using hand planes? My advice would be to get the thickness up, save up and dream about a planer and use the hand planes and uh, winding sticks. It's really not difficult. Like I've showed you, I mean, you just need to get some sort of a face on that board that you can see with the winding stick. It's not, there's no twist in it. That's important. But just enough flatness so that you can go through this and not tip or move. It, support, it supports itself. Or you can go down another route, of course, and that's buying dressed timber, plain all round, par. But people have different names for it. The problem is with that, that board's going to be plain to your specifications. You'll get that to the workshop and that's going to acclimate, start acclimating and uh, start causing you problems because that will then need dressing again. The thing is with buying sawn timber and you might think I've, I'm, I've hand planed a really easy board. If your timber merchant is a good one you'll find sawn boards aren't really that bad and they're not like B&Q style at, um, two by fours. Also buying sawn boards means you can pick your thickness so if you buy a 20 mil, 25 mil board thickness you can choose your 22, 20 mil, 19 mil. If you've already got your boards sawn mil to 19 mil you're stuck really with 19 mil aren't you sawn boards are also cheaper um I, I can't think of a single reason why i'd ever buy par boards and they cost a hell of a lot more too but you know having sawn boards in your workshop they can sit on the rack for four weeks acclimating to your workshop and they're going to be a lot more stable to work with and then you mill them nearly to size then i'd um put them to one side after milling close to final thickness and leave it overnight come back in the morning see if they've moved if they haven't moved a great deal crack on and f finish dressing the boards and get on with the job so that's me out